Here's a strange question for you. Have you ever thought about what would happen if you put a freshwater trout into the ocean? Could it survive? After all, only a few living things, like the occasional bull shark, are able to live in both salt and fresh water. You're welcome for that nightmare. Hey y'all, welcome back to Science Put Simply. Today we are talking all about the biology, chemistry, and maybe a little bit of physics, sorry, that explains why you should never swap a freshwater trout with a saltwater grouper. Let's start at the beginning. Obviously, there's one big difference between oceans and lakes, the amount of salt they have. It's also the abiotic factor that is at the core of this whole question. So in order to answer the question of how a trout would respond to being thrown in the ocean, we first need to understand a bit about how organisms regulate the amount of water and salt in their body. And that means we have to discuss osmoregulation. You see, every living thing needs to maintain a stable internal environment. We call that homeostasis. If an activity kicks something out of whack in the body, then it needs to find a way to get it back to normal. For example, on a hot day, humans will sweat to cool down and help keep their internal body temperature at the right level. That's good because, you know, it can help you avoid that whole heat stroke thing. But sweating also can mess with your body's ideal osmolarity. Because if you sweat a lot and don't drink anything to compensate, then your body's osmolarity goes up. Think about it like this. Let's say that you have a glass of water and you stir a tablespoon of salt into it. Then you put a fan over it so that the water starts to evaporate. There is still one tablespoon of salt in that glass, but there's now less water than there was before. This means that the concentration of salt in the water is now higher. Another way of saying this is that the glass of water now has a higher osmolarity. Changes in a living thing's osmolarity can be a big problem. If a human gets dehydrated, then you can deal with anything from just getting a little thirsty to something as serious as kidney failure. The good news is that a lot of living things, including humans, have evolved the ability to osmoregulate to prevent these things from happening. If you lose too much water through sweat, then your brain starts producing a hormone known as ADH that tells your kidneys to start conserving water to try to return to homeostasis. This is an example of osmoregulation. Obviously, osmoregulation is a critical process for land-dwelling humans. But how does it work with things that live in the water? After all, you aren't going to find fish sweating while running as fast as they can on a treadmill, but they do have to deal with other things that impact how much water and electrolytes they have in their body. And this is also where we come back to the idea of what happens if you put a freshwater fish in the ocean. And that key component of the amount of salt levels in the water. Because saltwater and freshwater fish are dealing with very different environments, and this affects their ability to osmoregulate. Freshwater fish live in an environment where they have higher osmolarity than the environment around them. This difference in osmolarity forms a gradient. Nature doesn't always like gradients. They want everything to be equal. So if you have a gradient, molecules are going to move from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration until everything is equal. Let's step away from the fish to better understand this and go back to that glass of water. But now let's put in a divider. We are only going to put salt on one side of that glass. The other side is going to be pure fresh water. This means that there is a gradient with higher osmolarity on one side and lower osmolarity on the other side. The other important thing to know is that the divider is a semi-permeable membrane, meaning that it allows some things to pass through, but not others, which limits exactly what can be done to try to equalize the osmolarity on both sides. In this case, only water can go through and not salt. So what happens? Water molecules are going to start passing through the divider into the saltier side. Wait, what? Why would that be happening? Just like with the freshwater fish, the imbalance in osmolarity is going to lead to a pressure difference that forces water molecules onto the saltier side to dilute it enough that the osmolarity ends up the same on both sides of the divider. Remember, salt can't move across the divider, so you can't have salty water going over to fresh water in order to equalize everything. The only option is for water molecules to move over to the saltier side to hopefully dilute it enough that the osmolarity becomes equal on both sides. It's confusing, I know. And this is basically what's happening with freshwater fish. Since a freshwater fish is saltier than the water surrounding it, water will just naturally move into the fish without it needing to take a single sip of that water. But this isn't necessarily good for the fish. 
because it can mess with its homeostasis. Freshwater fish have evolved ways to overcome this problem and return to homeostasis. They do this through many different avenues, including not actively drinking the surrounding water, finding ways to actively take up salt through things like food, and by producing very dilute urine that limits the amount of salt loss while maximizing the amount of water it removes from its body. Okay, we've got the freshwater fish taken care of. Let's talk about the saltwater fish. And since we've already explained a lot of the chemistry, this is gonna be pretty easy. You see, saltwater fish have the opposite problem that freshwater ones do, because the water that they live in is saltier than they are. This means that the fish are naturally losing water inside of them to the surrounding water. So they need to figure out a way to replace all that water, or at least to try to stop any more being removed than absolutely has to be. One way they do that is by producing very concentrated urine that has very little water in it at all. Another way is by actively drinking up the water around them. And now I know what you're thinking. Didn't I just say how salty that water was? Why are they drinking it? Well, saltwater fish have actually evolved a way to get rid of the salt in that water so that they only have the actual water molecules left. Think about it as someone who doesn't like raisins in trail mix. They pick out all the raisins so they just have the things that they want. Now that we've talked about all of that, <laughs> we can finally answer the question about what would happen if you put a freshwater fish in the ocean. To put it simply, most fish just wouldn't survive. Freshwater fish have evolved to not drink water while producing very dilute urine. If they were tossed in the ocean, then they wouldn't be able to just change these processes to start holding on to water instead and excreting a lot of salt. There are always a few exceptions that prove the rule, like yes, a few species of sharks that have adapted to be able to survive in fresh water and can occasionally be found in lakes, but that's really rare. So like, I wouldn't worry about it too much. And for the most part, fish, like all living things, have evolved ways to survive in their specific environment. And that's really how we answer that question. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more bite-sized pieces of science. I'll see you in the next one.